NASA's Kepler Space Telescope takes the search above Earth's atmosphere into space. Kepler travels 94 million miles away. Until it arrives on a stable orbit around the sun, where it looks out with a fixed and clear gaze to a single patch of sky in the constellations of Cygnus, Lyra, and Draco. What was special finally was the lid opens up and we see the nighttime sky. What we see is the sky is covered with stars. Every detector is working. Exposing 42 incredibly sensitive light sensors to the light of 150,000 stars, Kepler begins its search for Earth-like worlds. The problem with finding exoplanets is they just don't shine at all, and they're around really bright stars. That makes them virtually impossible to image. So astronomers came up with a different method, and that's called the transit method. Kepler uses the transit method for discovering planets around other stars. And it's really simple. A star is bright, and if a planet is orbiting it, if the planet passes in front of the face of the star, the planet blocks some of that light, and the star temporarily appears dimmer. So if we were to bring that down to Earth, imagine this lighthouse is your star. It's your source of light. If a moth flies in front of that light, even though to your naked eye the light looks the same, it actually has become a little bit dimmer because the light has been blocked by the moth. That's the transit method. At the time, the largest camera ever launched into space, Kepler is able to look for smaller, more Earth-like worlds. Those too small to be easily found using terrestrial telescopes. Soon, it starts to spot planets. The amount of dimming and the time between each dimming event gave us clues to a planet's size and its distance from its star. And with every world it finds, astronomers hold their breath, hoping for a rocky planet that might in some way remind them of Earth. Worlds like Kepler 36b, orbiting a star similar to our own. At first glance, a planet that resembles ours. So when we started finding these rocky planets like Kepler 36b that were getting closer to Earth mass, it was just the greatest feeling. Weighing in at around four times the mass of our own planet, we'd found one of the first rocky worlds that could have an atmosphere, a so-called super-Earth. What's so cool about Kepler is that it tells us so much more than just the planets exist. We get their sizes, we get their orbital characteristics, we can get their masses, and so what we're learning is not just that the planets are there, 
but what these planets are like.